In this video, we'll be taking a look at the hardware that will make up my new router, which is this machine. Also, if you're noticing an improved video quality here, I'm now using a new camera. So I've now got a Sony A6000, which is a very nice mirrorless camera. Um, hopefully it'll be much better video quality. It's shooting at 1080p 50 frames a second, which I'll be using to upgrade from this, which is my old camera, which is an old JVC GZ HD3. It was good when it was new, <laughs> but it's 1080i, it's a complete pain, and yeah, so hopefully this new camera will be a lot better and I won't have the copious numbers of issues that thing's caused. So yeah, so here's the hardware that's going to become my new router. So my current router is an old Biostar motherboard in a rackable systems case. It's a rack mount machine, but I sort of made it all myself. It's not the greatest, there's quite a lot of hacks to make it all fit in the case, such as having to saw a bit out of the back of the case to fit the power supply in. So it's not that nice. Um, and it's running PFSense. So I fancied a bit of a change, so I bought this. So this was £50 on eBay, and it's a Celestic Scorpio X. These were sold as like high-end network appliances at some, probably for some ridiculous price to big companies. So this one is a CLB4000, which was sold as a load balancer. They also had other various ones for VPN appliances and stuff like that. This one runs a custom Linux operating system, other ones that they did run Windows and various other operating systems. But in the end, it's a PC just inside, and they're quite cheap on eBay. So this one I have has a Core 2 Duo, it's an E4600 if I remember correctly. It has 2 gigs of DDR2 RAM and an 80 gig hard drive. Just bear in mind if you're looking at these that they're also available with Pentium 4s and Pentium Ds, which you'd probably want to avoid because they're just too old and too power hungry. This thing's okay, it pulls about 50 watts, so it's not actually that bad. So yeah, I will be running Vios on this, which is a Linux based operating system, which is a fork of the Viata operating system, which is commercial now. Um, and it's, I've tried it a little bit and it seems really good, so I'm really excited to get this thing up and running. So we'll take a look at the hardware and see what we get. So in the front of the machine, we have this nice Celestix logo, and this port, which is actually the serial console port. So you can see up here it's actually late, well, I don't know if you can make it out on the camera, but it's labelled 9600 8N1. So it talks about, tells you the baud rate and stuff of the serial port. So this is your serial console. Here we have two USB ports, a pair of gigabit Ethernet ports on board, and a separate expansion card also providing. Uh, 4 gigabit ethernet ports. So in total this appliance has 6 gigabit e ethernet ports and these are Intel chipset ones so they're actually really good. So if you compare this to a lot of cheap router type things on eBay they're usually 10 100 or have like a couple of gigabit ports. This has loads so that's a huge selling point of this. Also over here it has this really nice LCD which is 40 by two, 40 characters wide, 2 lines high. It's really nice, It's sort of I think it's green on black so the text lights up and there's n you don't really see a backlight, so it actually looks really nice. We've then got three LEDs. We've got this one which indicates a fault, this one which indicates disk activity, and this one which indicates power. It also has this knob on it, which I'll show you when we're running it, which allows you to control a simple menu system on this screen when you're in the operating system. This can turn both ways and it clicks in and out as well. Now here we are on the back of the system, where we have the power supply, which is just a standard 1U power supply. Some labels talking about the information on the mach about the machine there. And then here we have the ports, we have a, a third USB port, a regular serial port, this isn't a console port, and a VGA port, so it does have onboard video as well, you don't have to use the serial console. And then finally over here we have three 40mm fans, which you'll hear when we turn it on, are quite loud, but they can be fan controlled and turned down in other operating systems. So here we are inside the machine, and here we can see it's a completely custom system, there's no sort of standard PC, hard, sort of standard ATX hardware in here, it uses a completely custom motherboard. So as you can see down here, it's actually branded by Celestix, so either they make it or it's made for them, designed specifically for the system. And it's quite a neat layout, so you can see over here we have the power supply, which is a 300 watt FSP, um, 1U designed power supply. And over here with the hard drive, which is a 80 gig Seagate Barracuda, which is basic hard drive. Um, then over here we have this slot, which is a mini PCI slot. So on some variants of the Scorpio X platform, they use this to hold an encryption accelerator card. Uh, mine doesn't have it because obviously it isn't an encryption, it's not a VPN appliance, it's a uh, load balancer, so it doesn't have that fitted. You could, don't know what you could else you could put in there, there is possibly scope for upgrading that for with random things. Um, and here we can see the RAM, which is just a pair of two pair of one gig sticks of DDR2. There's an additional two slots, so you can upgrade that if you needed to. And then over here we can see we have four SATA ports, an IDE port, and what's really useful down here is an onboard CF card slot. So this is what I'll be using. Um, I've ordered an industrial CF card and I'll be putting that in here to run BIOS. So I'll be taking the hard drive completely out, using the CF card which will make it quieter, potentially more reliable and it'll save a lot of energy. Currently I don't have a CF card so I've actually been testing it using this, 
which is quite weird. It's a one inch hard drive. So this is actually a physical spinning hard drive in this case. Tiny little thing, 4 gig, but it fits in CF card slots. So it's a bizarre little device that I've had lying around for ages. I've actually got two of these. So I've been using this, but I'm waiting for the CF card to arrive to properly use it. Now over here, we have this shroud covering CPU heatsink, which we can take off. So it just lifts off like that and pulls out. It's a bit plastic. And here's the CPU heatsink, which is this massive solid copper thing. This weighs an absolute ton. I took this off and it was just ridiculous. Um, the only other problem with this is the thermal paste underneath. Now I'm not one of those people that get super excited over thermal paste. It's really not a big deal. But it was like concrete. So I would probably recommend if you do get one of these, possibly replace it just because it was properly like concrete. I had to literally sit with a card and just scrape it off and it took ages and it's still not properly clean under there. Um, I might need to get some other stuff to try and clean that. But this is a really nice heatsink. Like it's really thick and it weighs an absolute ton. In the back here we have these fans. These are 40mm Sanes fans. They are very loud as you can as you can tell, but they do you can slow them down in software, which I will be doing under VIOS, so that will be okay in the end. Now for the front ports, what you have over here is you can see the serial port is on board along with the USB ports and two of the Ethernet ports. The additional four Ethernet ports are provided by this card here, which I'll take out in a minute. So that is a, an additional add-on card that could also be optional or replaced with different cards for different variants of the system. There's also additional mounting posts here and here, which must have been for like a larger card. So that's quite interesting. So we'll take that card out now and see what it looks like. So this is that add-on network card. So you see on the top here there's these little heat sinks which are covering up the individual Intel network port, network controllers. Um, and then there's the four ports on the front which actually hang below the card. That's the bottom, just a bunch of surface mounted components. And that slot there, which is what connects the motherboard. don't know what standard that is, I don't know if it's some variant of PCI, but that is the connector it uses, so it's completely custom and proprietary. You're not able to get non-Celestix cards to fit that, I don't think. And now, under where that was, you can now see on the motherboard, there's the two controllers for the onboard NICs, and there is the slot this card fitted into, along with the mounting posts to hold it. At the back, we can see the other ports are all connected by our cables. So this would be the VGA port, this is the serial port, and this is the USB port, and they all connect round through cables into the motherboard over here. Finally, the only other sort of interesting thing we have inside is here, which is the LCD panel and the buttons. So it, this is also a completely custom thing. It's a standard LCD panel fitted to this custom controller board, which also has the knob on it. This connects via this ribbon cable to the motherboard. As far as I can tell from looking online, this carries USB for the actual LCD and knob, but it also carries individual signals for the LEDs which are controlled by the motherboard itself. So yeah, so that's the inside of it. It's a pretty neat little system. I've also just noticed there, it actually uses a 8-pin EPS connection, which is a bit strange because it's not like it's a particularly high power CPU or anything. This seems quite a much more modern thing to see on it. Like, I wouldn't expect it on a machine of this age, but yeah, it's got an 8-pin EPS connector. Um, there's also a 4-pin fan header, which must have been possibly if you had like an active CPU fan rather than a passive heatsink. So it seems to be designed for a bit customization as well, but yeah, so that's the inside of this machine. So now I have it hooked up to a monitor, so we're going to turn it on and see what it does running the normal Celestix operating system that's on it. It is very loud, so I won't be able to talk during this, so I'll sort of speed up through the boot process. So do that, we're just going to press the knob in here and it'll start up. See what I mean by loud? And this now appears to be started up. Um, I think there should normally be a login prompt here, but the monitor is cutting it off, but it's not important. Um, you can also see here it's running Apache, so this thing does also run a web interface. I'm not going to take a look at that now, but in a future video I might. I'm going to keep this hard drive sort of untouched, so we do still have the original software. Now down here we can see the little screen. As you can see, it's a really nice screen. Um, so it's just displaying some system stats at the moment, but then you can actually use this knob and change it, so that's letting me switch between CLB system menu. So you can switch between these menus, so you can CLB menu, get the status, and that's really it. The status, which will just say that. I also don't really know the details of this machine in particular. But, yeah, it's got a fair, it is quite a nice sort of menu system on here. Um, system as well, you can go into in there, calendar, set the date and time, network, which lets you set IP addresses on it. There you go. So you actually use this as a system to actually change IP addresses through the menu, which is quite neat for an appliance like this. 
and finally can reboot and shut down. So if we just go shut down, we say yes or no, say yes, and the machine will actually shut down. Now we can see it's powered off and it now says system off. So I've now disconnected the hard drive that was running the Celestix operating system and put the, the Combat Flash card in, or Combat Flash hard drive type thing, in that holds VIOS. So we're going to boot up into VIOS and I'll show you a couple of customizations I've done. So again, if you turn it on as before, it gets extremely loud. Now you'll notice there how it suddenly got very quiet. That's because under BIOS, which is just a, it's based on Debian 6 Linux, I've installed the fan control package, which you can actually see was starting up here. So fan control is, a lot, is, it, is now being used to regulate the fan speed based on the CPU temperature, rather than allowing the BIOS to do it, which keeps it a bit loud. So the fans are now going to be running at a really low speed, there's barely any airflow coming out the back there, but it's really quiet. And then if the CPU heats up, which it won't really because it's not under high load, the fans will then ramp up. Which is important for me because whereas this machine is designed for like a network, like a server room, data center type environment, this is going in my living room because I'm weird like that. So it needs to be relatively quiet because I can't have something screaming like that in my living room and I'm going to try and watch TV. So I'm going to have it nice and quiet, which it is. So here we are at the VIOS boot prompt. Not going to go in, it's just VIOS. I might do another video on that as well. But yep, you can see how quiet the fan control is. What you're now looking at is my project from yesterday. So as you can see here, there's now a little menu on here. This actually isn't part of VIOS. VIOS does nothing to do with this. Normally it would just turn on, it would just say system ready on this screen. However, I've built a little Python application. Um, the code's all on GitHub, I've put a link in the description for it, um, to actually provide a nice little menu system on here. Also notice that the fault light is flashing. I still need to figure out how to stop that. What it does is when you turn the machine on, it starts flashing the fault light. And I think the idea is when you boot the Celestix operating system, when it successfully boots, it will switch that off to stop it saying there's a fault. However, because it's not booting that, that won't switch off, so it keeps flashing. Um, I might, I'll try and figure out how to do it. On the other hand, you could just say, you know, it's the internet, it has a red flashing light on it. Um, so here we have the screen, so you can see it's a beautiful little screen. Um, and I've set this up so you can actually now flick through these using the knob, so you can actually go through a few options. So it's got interface statistics, system health, rebooting the system and shutting it down. As you can see, I've taken sort of quite a bit of inspiration from the Celestix menu system here. So we can go into interfa interface statistics, click into that, and it now lists each device. Of course, there's no network devices connected, but as you can see that's the first bridge. Bridge 2, bridge 3, so we can cycle through all the bridges. As you can see, it says the interface is up or down, it's got the MAC address, um, and it also has the receive and transmit rates, which obviously aren't doing anything at the moment because there's nothing connected, but these do live update. There's ETH0, ETH1, two, three, four. Um, that's now going into the different VLANs that are on Ethernet 4. So VLAN 4, VLAN 5, VLAN 6, VLAN 7, ETH5, and loopback. So that is what I've been working on. So that's a wee thing that works there. Click that to go back out and go into system health, which will show the CPU load averages, the system temperature, and the fan speed. And we can finally go and shut down and reboot. So if we go and shut down, We've got this. Do you want, are you sure you want to shut down? Totally not make that entire style from the Celestix one. And we can select yes and we hit the button and the machine will shut down. And yeah, it got very loud there because when the machine shuts down, it switches, it shuts off the fan control service and then it gets quite loud. So that was quite cool. That's a little Python thing I've built. It's on GitHub. You can play with it if you want. If anyone has one of these devices, which Probably most people won't because they're not that common. So there you have it, that was a look at the Celestix Scorpio X CLB4000. So this seems like an awesome bit of hardware for running your own router, um, be it VIOS or PFSense, this will run PFSense. You might have a bit more trouble with fan control and this little screen under BSD-like operating systems, but it should work fine and VIOS works awesome on it. So this will be a great bit of kit. So I might do more videos on it once I get it running, we'll see, see how I get on. So yeah, thanks for watching, don't forget to comment, rate and subscribe. You can also visit my website at camerongray.me and follow me on Twitter at camerongray1515 and stay tuned for more videos like this in the future. Thanks for watching.